Oh, Steven Spielberg, you beautiful, beautiful bastard, you. What's up, everyone? Chris here from MTR Network. We're back with another movie review. I've uh, been putting out a lot of videos lately. So, um, again, before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also make sure you hit that notify button so you can stay here on the MTR Network. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming out here on the channels. And make sure if you go to the actual channel page, check out the other channels we have. We have the Unanimous Decision, the Unanimous Decision Podcast channel, and we also have the Super Tuesday Recap channel. Uh, Unanimous Decision covers our sports podcast. Super Tuesday recap is covering all of our Arrowverse uh, podcasts and our unboxing videos. So, um, but that's not what we're here for. We're here today to uh, review Ready Player One, that is directed by Steven Spielberg, and I think um, the, it's based off a book. I didn't know the book was. First of all, I didn't read the book. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't know that this book by Ernest Cline was so recent. It's from a book in 2011, so I thought it was an older book. Um, but. Um, yeah, so I didn't read the book. I kind of, I, I, I hate reading the book before going to see a movie if I haven't already read it. Um, I feel like that kind of colors things. But in this case, everybody was kind of saying the book was eh, just okay. And so I definitely didn't want to, I think a lot of people were making their decisions on how Ready Player One would go um, based off of that. So I went in completely blind. And I got to tell you something, guys. Um, this movie is fire. This this shit is fucking amazing. This is a great, great fucking film. It's Steven Spielberg. And I'm saying this is somebody who today got a little pissed at Steven Spielberg for what he said about Netflix and Netflix movies shouldn't be up for Oscars. Like, we're going to have a conversation about that, uh, Steven, because uh, you were definitely wrong on that. When it comes to making this movie here, you did an amazing job. It is, it is a fantastic film. I mean, it's basically... The, pro the plot of this film is basically that... In, I think it's 2045, the world has become, it's one of those, uh, not really, I guess, I guess it's dystopian, but not really where everyone doesn't really do things in real life. And instead they do everything in this game called the Oasis. They, they play, they, they, they can make themselves into any avatar they want. They play in different arenas. It's basically this AR, VR world where they can do whatever they want uh, in the game and they have to earn coins and... What happened is the creator of this game died and he left an Easter egg, which basically was, you know, if you get these three keys, you will get ownership of the company that created this oasis. And so what people have been doing for like the like last five years is trying to uh, trying to find these keys. And the lead character is a Ty Sheridan's character, um, Wade, Wade Watts, I think. And um yeah, look, I know a lot of people were calling this, like, downgrading this film as nostalgia the movie, and it definitely is 80s nostalgia, and I think some of the, maybe, like, early, mid-90s as well, uh, but let me tell you something, uh, that shit's amazing, I fucking love that shit, I am an 80s baby, I, I grew up in the 80s, was born in the 80s, um, and so I had a lot of connection to some of the characters and some of the, just the Easter eggs they throw in this. And it's just, it's just a really, really fun movie. I, I don't know what to say. Like, just like Jumanji, which this movie blows Jumanji away, by the way. But, so this is a weird thing with video game movies. And again, we just had one with um, Tomb Raider where it's like, it's probably the best video game movie, like movie based off of a video game that we've ever seen, but it's still not like up to snuff. But yet, so when you had a movie like Jumanji, which kind of, turns itself into a video game movie, even though it's not based off a video game, and it becomes super fun, and it's just great. Same thing happens with Ready Player One. It's not based off of a video game. It's based off a book, but they're playing a game, and you're watching these avatars play, and they do things like video games. Once again, you're seeing this is... This movie succeeds where video game movies fail. It's like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because they're they're fully embracing what video games are but like they do things that if you're a gamer and you've ever played any kind of game like any kind of game you get these things you get little things like um the idea that um ben middleson is basically playing the bad guy in this one and he's the corporate suit who 
uh, pay, basically has paid his way into the game and gets everything handed to him. Down to the part of, he doesn't even know things about the game. He just wants to control it. He wants the, the fame and fortune that comes with it, literally, with this, but doesn't want to put the actual work into being a gamer. He doesn't want to actually understand what it is. I mean, there's a whole funny thing about how where he keeps his password. It, it reminds me of um, uh, uh, the scene in um, Spaceballs where they reveal what the password on the the luggage was. Uh, the the password to the the air shield was was one two three four five. It's something similar to that, but in more modern time here. And it's um, it's so fucking hilarious. You have uh, just the different aspects of this. You can see not just Again, and, and the references in this movie aren't just about video games. There's a whole level, if you will, that's involving a very, very popular horror film. Uh, and it is, they do an amazing job with this. And it's just it's just really, really fun. And again, I, I, I never really paid attention beforehand some of the complaints people had about the film. So I, I'm really going to... Like I think when and when Phenom and I uh, sit down, we're gonna try to get Joy on, and we'll try to have a more in depth discussion. So make sure you follow us on our podcast, movie trailer reviews, and we'll. I think we're gonna make that a spoiler podcast. I think in order to really discuss this film, we got to get into spoilers and some of the references you see. But I I think overall, just for what it is, like this is just a really really fucking fun film where you can you can relive some of the things from your childhood, but also as a current person who's ever played, you know, plays video games, you can get some of the things like there to me, I, at one point I turned to Phenom cause I, something was happening. Like some of the Ben Middleton characters said, cause he's, he's his corporate suit reminded him. It was like, Oh, he's basically proposing microtransactions, which if you're a gamer, you hate fucking microtransactions. And that's literally what he was proposing. Like there's a whole thing where he's like, we, we can, we can uh, shove all this advertising in front of the gamers and uh, we can do all this for like 30 seconds before they, they pass out and have seizures. It's like all the things you think of when you think of how the corporate structure has kind of ruined games. And I, and I appreciate the fact that like, yes, Ty Sheridan is obviously a, a, a white man uh, in this role, a white kid in this role. Um, but like the team around him you know, Lena Waithe, who we know is having, you know, an amazing run right now. Uh, she plays a really vital role in this movie. You have uh, a, a, another girl. His team involves two, uh, two Asian kids. Like, it's like it's a really, really diverse team. And they're all together. And they all work together to create this one goal of basically saving the Oasis. And so, yeah, it, to me, it's also pretty diverse. Um, they there There is... I guess if there, I guess there are two big complaints I could have. One, and I talked about this if you listen to our Sandy Check podcast, um, you'll be able to figure out that T.J. Miller, who T.J. Miller's character is in the film. And I'll be honest, yes, he's funny, but then when you also remember the allegations against T.J. Miller, like I kind of wish they had just gone ahead and recast him and had somebody else play those roles because, like, mm, it just. You know, if you don't know about his allegations, I guess it's not creepy. He is funny. You can look at it in that context. But when you know about the allegations against him, yeah, that's really not a good, not a good look. And the second thing that, again, wasn't a problem for me, but I can see some people probably having some issues with is they could have definitely gone into more detail about the the way that the economic structure was set up in here to to use work like I, I totally get that they could have gone into this and this is a really long film like, this is a film that's two hours and 20 minutes and they could have gone into that but I think they stayed more on the fun side and I can't really knock them for that because the fun side is just really really fun like it's it's to me I think what makes this this movie so much fun and what makes it to me again another film that really grasps what it what we're looking for when we say we want movies based on the video games like there are games inside of the game like there's in this movie they're game they're playing the game to get this easter egg but like they have to problem solve they have to solve puzzles they have to do things that you would think the that that if you were playing the game like if you were to play ready player one you would be doing the same thing you would be thinking the same way like i've 
Like you're watching the lead character Wade struggle. Him, not, and it's not just him. Him and Artemis struggle. Uh, Artemis is played by uh, Olivia Cook, uh, and you're watching them struggle to kind of figure out these pieces of the puzzle. And again, if you've ever played a video game and you've done this, if you play some kind of hard puzzles, it's you get those. You you see those there, and like it just it captures that essence, and it does that in a way that video game movies like Tomb Raider, um, uh, Assassin's Creed. The Hitman movies. Like, I started watching again. Oh, this is so bad. I'm doing a nostalgia review on uh, Super Mario Brothers. Oh, my God. The movie is so terrible. But it has nothing to do with the video games. And it's just... But, but like, Ready Player One takes those aspects of that. You know what it reminds me at some points? It, it It's so weird. Like, there are three movies that stand out to me as movies that capture the video game essence. Um, in their movies that video game movies don't do. Obviously, Raider Player, one that we just talked about, Jumanji does it, and um, Scott Pilgrim is another one where it's over the top, it's ridiculous, what, you know, in the game aspect of it, and it's like, that's what you need to do if you're trying to make, like, Tomb Raider. Yeah, make it gritty, make it, but you can also add those video game elements because it's supposed to be ridiculous. The reason why combo movies have gone through this revolution is, yeah, they can be serious combo movies, but they still embrace the fantastical nature of the comic books. They, they take the pages of the comic books and they put them on screen. And I think that's what's been missing from video game movies. And Ready Player One does that. Like, the final battle, I, I swear to God, when you watch the final battle, the final big fight scene in this film, there were no less than five times when... Everybody in the theater was just shouting out and was just like having the time of their life because they were a new reference would pop up, something would, would show up, and you were like, "Oh my god, I, I can't believe!" Like that's a deep cut. How did you go? Like it's there's so many things in here that you're gonna want to watch it again to really capture every to just make sure you saw everything. Like it, it's so like you see characters like from Bat from the Batman games. You see characters from. You know, uh, Ninja Turtles, like, characters not... And again, not just from video games, from regular pop culture. And they're not, like, out there in your face. So, like, you'll see them in the corner, like, wait, is that, is that Harley Quinn? Shit, is that Batgirl over there? Like, you just see them out of the corner of your eye, just around there. And then, again, and then there's times when you see them, like, full out in front of you. You're like, oh, shit, that's that's incredible. Like, there's a moment in, in the final battle where people, like... I think if people could have gotten up to stand up and clap, I think they would have. And because it was just, it's 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 just it's so much fun. And I think this is the 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 piece of the puzzle that's been missing in video game movies. If you do that, this, you know, don't treat them so seriously that you can't have the fantastical elements of like there's there's a moment when they're in there and they're scrolling through their inventory to figure out what weapons they're gonna pick, like. Things like that, like that's what we need to see because that's part of it. And it's it's so funny because Jumanji did the same thing. Like when when they tapped themselves to see what their strengths and weaknesses were, and and their basically their HUD popped up. Like that's what you kind of want to see, and like that's what you want. That like, that's the whole aspect of the video game stuff. So, and again, like I think it's just a fun fun film. I mean, yeah, there can be some awkward you know teen moments with some of the the I, you know. The love stuff is kind of, I, in this kind of film, they're always kind of forced. And, um, but I, I just enjoyed it. Like, Ben Middleton plays, he's a, he's a jackass. Like, he's the corporate jackass. You know, um, Ty Sheridan is the, 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 the kid who lives in the game. The nerd kid who lives in the game and has no idea how to talk to women or talk to real people in real life. And doesn't understand that real life is real life. He just... He treats it like a game. He doesn't understand the seriousness of it. And throughout this movie, you see him kind of grow and understand that, oh, shit, what we do in the game can affect our lives outside the game. And like I said, um, Lena Waithe is, is amazing. She's great in this film. It's, 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 yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like I said, uh, I know there were a lot of people that were kind of downing the idea of this film, and I get that. Like, I don't think that the trailers do this film justice because even going into this i was like 
I don't know about this, guys. And it was then I found out it was two hours and 20 minutes. And I was like, I really don't know about this. But like from the moment the game opens, uh, the game, the moment the movie opens and, and, and Wade enters into the Oasis, you're like, okay, this is kind of cool. All right, I'm kind of feeling this. And I swear after about 10, 15 minutes, you, you're you sold. You're Like I was fully committed to this movie after the first 10 minutes. I was like, oh, okay. Like I think that's what they should have done instead of doing like the trailers. They should have just put the first 10 minutes of this this film out there for people to watch. And I think people would have gotten it. Like it's, yeah, I, go see this film. Like I think this is, this is a film that's coming in, and I think you know, we've had some really shitty films. Uh, like Black Panther has been doing great you know, when it came out, but in between Black Panther and now, we've had either some really really shitty films, uh, <clears throat> Death Wish, or we just had some films that I think are just okay. Like you know, um, you know, A Wrinkle in Time is just okay to some people. Uh, uh, Pacific Rim to me is just okay. Tomb Raider is just okay. I mean, these are just okay films. Ready Player One is an amazing film. You should go see it. Uh, one thing I will say, nerds, listen, I love you guys because I'm a nerd. I'm a gamer. I get that. But any of you out there trying to say, this is our Black Panther, go fuck yourself. Just stop. That's ridiculous. Like I said, like, no, th this is not your, like, we've had nostalgia movies before. Like I said, you know, Jumanji was just as much fun and took some of the video game aspects of it and the nerd aspects of it. You had, you know, Scott Pilgrim. Like, let's not go too far and belittle Black Panther by saying this is a Black Panther for nerds. Like, don't do that shit. That's fucking ridiculous. Um, if I had to give a score for this film, honestly, I, again, because the T.J. Miller scene, because I do know the allegations against T.J. Miller were kind of cringeworthy. If not for that, I'd probably give it a nine. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock it down a... Uh, a point and I'm not gonna have a point and give it an eight and a half because uh yeah I love this film I'm definitely gonna see it again uh I think you all will really really enjoy it I it's again it's just again it's one of the it's funny because we haven't put this out but Deep Palm and I we do our character corner podcast and we talk about we've been talking about Batman and um we were talking about Batman um the Arkham games and I'm doing I'm going through a replay of Arkham Knight and it's a video game, but what Deepon wants to call it is it's a Batman simulator because you are, you become Batman. And that reminded me of Ready Player One. Like you see these people become their avatars and they're fighting and they're doing all this stuff. And it's like, I'll be honest, man, if, if AR at some point, VR can do this shit at some point, uh, I hope I'm alive for that shit because I would definitely come in and do, it look fun as shit. Like I, I definitely do. And um, yeah. That shit would look amazing. So, again, there are a lot of little references in there. You're gonna you're gonna freak out. I mean, there are some. There, there's one moment when something ha something gets thrown, and you're like, "Wait, is that what I think it is?" Like, it is. There are some deep cuts in this film, and they're amazing. So, um, that's it. Ready Player One, Steven Spielberg. Like I said, I want to hate on this man for what he said today about Netflix, and we're gonna have that conversation. But uh, he makes some good fucking films. Like Steven Spielberg can make some fucking films. He can, that, that man can direct. I'm like, let's, let's, we gotta put some respect on his name. So, uh, anyway, folks, thank you guys very much for listening. Again, make sure you subscribe to the Movie Trailer Room podcast. Go to iTunes. Um, I'm gonna try to get the team together. I'm gonna try to get, uh, I know Phenom and I are definitely gonna review this on Thursday. So that means it'll be out on the feed on Friday. And I'm gonna try to see if I can sneak Joy in there to, to, to review it with us as well. And I think we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I normally we put our spoiler reviews on, um, the, uh, Put our spoiler reviews on the premium feed. And if you want to go in premium, it's eight dollars a month. Uh, you can see the link down in the, in, the, in the show notes. But for Ready Player One, I think we're I'm feeling generous. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, we put this on the on the free feed. So if you go ahead and subscribe now on Movie Trailer Reviews Podcast, uh, you'll be able to get on Friday, hopefully, a spoiler review from us. So um, yeah, folks, stay tuned. Next week, I think uh, I have some more videos coming out this week. I think. I think next week the um the first movie we're reviewing is i think it's the quiet ones i gotta double check my schedule our screener schedule but i believe it's the quiet ones and um, i'm actually looking forward to that film so uh stay tuned folks we got some stuff coming out on the network so until next time we're out of here see you peace